Hello and welcome. This is Cheryl. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, I'm going to share some hot foiled cards using the new Glimmering Flowers collection from Spellbinders. They sent me several of these to create with and share with you. That first one there is the Curved Everyday Sentiments. This is the Glimmering Buttercups foil plate, as well as the Glimmered Layering Buttercup stencil. These are five by seven stencils, so these are perfect for larger cards. But the first couple of cards that I'm gonna create are the smaller A2 cards, so they work for that as well. This one is the Glimmering Peonies foil plate, as well as the Glimmering Peonies layering stencil. And again, these are five by seven stencils as well. There's five stencils in each one of the layering stencil sets. So you can get really creative when you're coloring in your foiled images. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna foil both of those plates, both the Glimmering Peonies as well as the Glimmering Buttercups. And I'm gonna use some Aura Foil. It's a beautiful gold hot foil that has an iridescent shine to it. And I love how well it works with many different colors. I have a piece of four and a quarter by five and a half inch hammer mill cardstock. And I have a piece of foil that's just a little bit bigger than that to go with it. So you can see how that foil plate is bigger than that four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of cardstock. So it's going to go over the edges, but that's okay. It still looks absolutely beautiful. I put it in my glimmer machine with the foil and the paper, as well as the plates on top, set the timer. And once that's done, I put it through my Spellbinders Platinum 6 machine for the pressure. All of those foil pieces that I'm taking off, I'm putting them to the side and when I'm done all my foiling, I'm gonna be using the solid hot foil plate so that I get the most out of each piece of foil. The next image I'm gonna be doing is the Glimmering Buttercups. I always like to do several different images foiled at the same time and then create with them afterwards. I might as well, once I have that Glimmering Glimmer machine warmed up, might as well get the most use out of it. I do the same procedure as the first one. I put my stack on my Glimmer machine, set the timer, and once that's done, I put it through my die cutting machine for the pressure and then peel off the foil. And I love how gorgeous these images are. Beautiful for the fronts of cards, but you could use them for other things as well. The Curved Everyday Sentiment set has two foil plates that you can put and then put the foil on top. And I love how it has a coordinating die that cuts out each one of these foil plate sets the same exact way. And by being able to cut a bunch of them at the same time, it's really great for being able to cut or create a bunch of sentiments at once. And for all of these, I use that same Aura foil, so they're gonna coordinate beautifully together. I have a touch of overfoiling on there, and I'll share with you in a minute how to get rid of some of that. So now that I'm done the foiling for now, I'm gonna put my solid hot foil plate on there, put the used foil on there with the hammer mill cardstock, press the timer, and once again, put it through my die cutting machine for that pressure. Now these pieces, sometimes I use them with the cards that I'm creating, sometimes I save them for future projects, especially the sentiments, I'll, often I'll die cut them and save them for future projects as well. And sometimes I like to use them as mats in the current card that I am creating, and I'll do that with one of them later on. But it's a great way to use and utilize as much of that foil as possible. And I always like doing it at the same time that I have my machine warmed up and ready to go because that way I'm not trying to store some of this foil. It's a lot easier to store the pieces of cardstock. The other thing I like to use them for is die cutting tiny little die cuts for different embellishments for different projects. They work perfectly for that as well. And it's really easy to store just a tiny little piece of cardstock that has the foil already on it. So it's ready to go when I want to do that. I absolutely love how gorgeous that Aura foil is with that iridescent shine to it. Now that I am done with foiling for the moment, we'll take off some of that overfoiling. So I'm just using a little piece of the yellow tape from Spellbinders. What I do recommend is putting it onto your pants or a pair of sh or a shirt or something ahead of time just to take a touch of that stick off. And then you can use it around your piece to take off any of the excess foiling. And this particular one, there was a lot of overfoiling at the centers of different letters and stuff like that. And that comes off really, really easily. Sometimes you can get it off with just even a soft brush. 
for any of the stubborn overfoiling, you can use a sand eraser for that. I like to use the um, pointed edge so I can get very precise with where I want to use it. You don't want to use this sand eraser over top of the foil though because it does change the finish of the foil and it dulls it a little bit. You see the little scratch marks in it. So I do like to do this before I do any of the die cutting there because it's much easier to do this on a larger area than say a small die cut. Once I have that overfoiling taken care of, I can take my the die that goes with this set, I can tape it to it and then put it through the Spellbinders Platinum 6 machine. Definitely want to be positioning this properly and taping it in place just to make sure that it's not going to shift in the machine as you're putting it through. I also like to put the tape on a place where there isn't any of the foiled letters because the tape does transfer a little bit and it will affect the finish of the foil as well. Once all of these are die cut, I can just put them to the side and have them ready to go for the rest of this video and for some future projects. There's going to be extras. I'm not going to be using all of these, but it's nice to have a ton of selection and choice ready to go, already die cut and at hand. It makes it really easy to just grab a sentiment to finish a card off. I often like to create cards and not put sentiments on them. So having just a bunch of pre-done finished sentiments makes it great to just grab um, a finished card that doesn't have a sentiment and just put a sentiment that coordinates on it. And then you have a completely finished card that is customized to the occasion that you're working on. So the first thing I'm going to do color is the glimmering peonies. And I already have my color selection picked out for this, but I really, really liked when I turned the car, the package over. I liked the color scheme that they used on the back of that package. That was really, really pretty and also really unexpected. I like to use a tiny little bit of the yellow tape to tape that foiled image down because the image that I'm using or the paper that I'm using is smaller than that stencil. It's much nicer to have that taped in place so that I know that it's not going to shift under my stencil while I'm doing my ink blending. If the paper is bigger than your stencil, you can just use some tape on the top and just have it taped to that paper and you'll see that in a little bit in this video. But when that cardstock is smaller, it's just too easy for it to shift underneath there. And by having it taped down, I don't have to worry about that at all. I'm using some Distress Inks to ink blend in this stencil. Um, it makes it really, really quick and easy to ink blend, as well as the fact that it comes off the stencil really, really easily. I just put it under some warm water and it rinses right off. The first color I used there was spun sugar and now I'm going in with a little bit of kitsch flamingo. So the spun sugar, I did a light coat over the entire flower. The kitsch flamingo, I go about two thirds up and then the last color here is picked raspberry and I'm going about a third up. I wanna have some nice gradation on those flowers and this stencil makes it really, really easily easy to do that. For the leaves, I have three different greens. I'm going in with bundled sage. I also have peeled paint. And then later on, I'm gonna pull in some forest moss as well, just adding some darker areas. By being able to go in and have different shades of the color, it gives it a lot more interest. It gives it a little bit more depth by being able to have some shaded in areas there. And because I'm working from dark to light with my colors, I don't need to worry about contaminating my ink pads. I am very careful when I'm doing both petal section as well as leaf sections on one stencil. I'm careful with my blending brush so that I'm trying not to get it in areas that I don't want, to, want it to be. But other than that, it works really well really, really well. So for the second stencil here, I am using those same colors. The cool thing about these stencils is right at the bottom left hand corner, there's a number in there. So it lets you know exactly what order they intend for those stencils to be colored in. But you don't necessarily have to do it in that order. You can do it in whatever order you want. Um, you're coloring different areas of the image. So there's not really a wrong way to do it. But it is nice, especially if you're new to layered stencils, to have a bit of a guideline as to which stencil it is. I like to put them over to the side when they're used. And then once I'm done my project, I just go run them under the tap and towel dry them um, so that they're ready to go for the next project. And so those were the three same colors as the first petals. The only thing I'm adding in here is I put a touch of wilted violet right at the bottom base of those petals. 
the back of the packaging with the blue flowers kind of inspired me to add a little bit of an unexpected color there but I didn't want it on every single layer so I just did it on the second stencil and the third stencil so that it's going to be on the back part of the buds and some of the petals that are lower or towards the back of the flower it just gives it a little bit more interest and I really love just that pop of purple and it I don't think it really shows up as purple per se it just looks a little bit um, darker with a purple tinge to it because it's going right over those pinks that I already had here you can see how quick and easy it is to color this image in and if you wanted to do a ton of like a mass producing of cards you could really easily foil a whole bunch of images all at once and then kind of do an assembly line with your stencils and color in all of those images at once and then have a bunch of colored in foiled images ready to go to put your cards together again I'm going with the lightest color to the darkest color so I don't necessarily need to worry about cleaning my brush off in between colors but I do if I find that I've been using a darker color and then want to go to a light one I do have a scrap piece of paper off to the side that I'll just rub my brush off to clean it off it doesn't need to be oh there I did it it doesn't need to be necessarily completely clean but I do want to get a little bit of the excess off so that I have more control over the color and then when I'm doing the foiling, I'm also, I also start light-handed till I get a feel for how much color is on there. So here's where I went and added in that forest moss, just for some darker leaves to give it a little bit more dimension. The other thing I did, and I think I did it on the last stencil, um, might be on this one, but I think it was just the last stencil, is I took some tumbled glass, which is a blue color, and I also added that to the base of some of the leaves. And again, that was also inspired by the back of the stencil packaging with those blue flowers. They also had a little bit of blue thrown in with some of the leaves, and I really liked the look of that. And because some of these extra leaves are a little bit different shapes, they look like different leaves from the, different from the bigger clusters, I thought they worked well with adding just a touch of blue for a little bit of a different color. This particular stencil also has the centers of the flowers and I put that wilted violet on the centers of the flowers as well, just to give it some a really dark center and pull in that wilted violet layer there. This is the last stencil here and this is the one where I pulled in that tumbled glass. So I'm just gonna do some bundled sage just to get a little bit of a green um, tone for all the leaves first and then I will put some of that tumble glass just at the base of each one of those leaves. I do it very very quickly so there's nothing precise about it. It just adds like I said a little bit of a different green tone to it. You don't see a ton of the blue because it mixes with that green and that's the great thing about using distress inks or dye inks for this. Because they're transparent they blend together quite well so you get a lot of um, color blending with it you don't necessarily see a lot of individual colors especially if you're doing an unexpected color like this the great thing about layering stencils like this when you're coloring an image is all you really need to think about is what colors you want to do and really the sky is the limit when it comes to color combinations when it comes to green tones I think this looks absolutely gorgeous and it came together so quick and easy. It, um, using layering stencils is a great way to color, especially for people that don't necessarily love coloring. So now I'm going to color in the glimmering buttercups. So I am going to use some Cloud9 interference ink pads. And if you haven't seen me use them before, I like to use them regularly. Um, I have a whole playlist with them, so you can check that out on other ways to use them. These ink pads look different on black than they do on white. So the first thing I like to do is take a black ink pad and put some shading in where I typically would put the darkest color. Then I like to wipe my stencil down because I don't want to take or pick, re, be picking up any of that black ink that's on that stencil with my ink blending brush for the interference pad trying to um, not get as much transfer as possible so you can see there that first one that i showed was summer garden and it had green with a blue shimmer to it on the black 
This color here is called Lemon Candy, and it has yellow to it, but on the black, when you tilt it in the light, you see a little bit of a coral color to it. So I thought it would be beautiful for buttercups especially. In the end, I'll tell you right now, in the end, I changed the color to it. So the pictures on my thumbnail and stuff like that are different, and you'll see why in a moment. I finished the first stencil. These, the buttercups have five stencils, just like the glimmering peonies. So the first two are flower stencils, and then the last three are all greenery. So I'm going to do the same step with this as I did with that first one. I go in first with my ink blending brush with the black ink. And once again, I'm using Distress Ink. It works perfectly for this and it cleans off the stencil really, really easily and really, really well. After I've done my ink blending with black, I take my cloth and I clean off any of that excess black and then go in with my interference ink pad. So this just shows up yellow here on the screen, but as you could see when I did that one swatch, when you tilt it in the light, you see a little bit of that coral. And I wanted these flowers to have a little bit of a different shimmer to them to give them some interest. So now we're working on the third stencil. So here we're gonna start working on the leaves. For this particular project, I'm using two different interference ink pads. So I'm gonna do the same step with all five stencils. I'm gonna start out with the black ink, doing some ink blending at the base of the leaves and the greenery, and then wipe that stencil off and then go in with that summer garden pad. The summer garden looks green on white cardstock, but on the black ink, it's going to have a blue tone to it, especially when you tilt it in the light. It's a little bit hard sometimes to see that on video, but when you see it in real life, um, it has a real wow factor to it. So I have a detailed ink blending brush here that I am using with this pad. I like to label my ink blending brushes and for these particular pads, I have specific ones for specific pads. And by labeling them, I know exactly which one was used with which pad. You could, if you wanted, use some scrap paper and do like rub the brush on there to get as much ink as off as possible. But because every single pad has a different color base and then a different iridescent shine to it, I prefer to have a brush per pad and keep that brush for that particular pad. So if you're able to do it, that's what I like to do, but you don't necessarily have to. For stencil number four, we're gonna repeat the exact same steps as the last one, going in with that black ink first, doing the ink blending, rubbing it off, and then going in with that Cloud9 interference ink pad. And these come in so many different colors and shades, so you can get really creative when it comes to your color combinations with them. This one I just thought would be a perfect one for some greenery because of the blue tone on the black. And I also like the color of green for greenery. Now it's after I pull this fourth stencil off that I realize a problem with my color scheme. These greens or this um, summer garden, the green and blue, as well as the lemon candy, they're kind of blending into each other. So my flowers really aren't popping. They're just kind of all looking like the same color. When you tilt it in the light, you see the blue and the coral, but when you're not tilting it in the light, it kind of all looks like the same color. That yellow took on a little bit of a green tone when it was used, and then it kind of looks very similar to um, the green from the Summer Garden one. It's definitely not the same shade of green, but with an all over pattern, it kind of all looks the same. So after sitting and staring at it for a moment, I decided to change the colors of the flowers. So here, when I tilt it in the light, you can see a little bit of the coral, you can see a little bit of the blue, but the, um, the best solution, rather than start all over again, is to change the color of the flowers and have them pop a little bit more. So this is the pink champagne. It is um, a pink color, and then the interference is a little bit on the green side. But because I already have that lemon candy there, we get a little bit more, um, it's kind of a little bit of a dark, corally, almost burgundy color. It's, it's a color that I can't really explain, but it makes those flowers pop a little bit more, and that way they're a lot more visible. And it was the best solution for this. 
and the pink champagne interference pad was chosen because I knew that pink was going to be dark enough to cover that yellow and I knew the green interference tone on the black wasn't going to be a problem. So if you ever run into this where you just don't necessarily or all blends together, you don't necessarily like a color, you can pick a darker color and it will likely work. It will likely blend together. So I'm not seeing just the pink. I do get a combination of the two colors together. And I actually really, really like the color combination. So I'm going to have to remember it for future projects and do it intentionally because um, the result, I really loved the result. This particular one, because it was called Glimmering Buttercups, I figured it had to be yellow in my head, but yellow isn't my favorite color. So I was actually kind of happy about this accident because it forced me to use a different color scheme. And really, while this is called Buttercups, they're not necessarily recognizable as Buttercups. The one thing here, what I was pointing out is when you're doing the ink blending on the glimmer foil, your ink is not going to dry on the glimmer foil. And when I was trimming this down for the card, I got my fingers on the ink that was on the foil and not dried and I had forgotten to wipe it off. So something to note is once you're done this, use your dry cloth and quickly just clean that ink off of those off of the glimmer foil basically and make sure that you don't have any wet ink that is going to transfer as you are um, drying anything or, uh, sorry as you're trimming anything so one thing that I love to do especially when I'm using these interference inks is I often like to use a black cardstock behind it but in order to get it to match my inked blending I like to use one of those ink pads and go over the edges. You only need to do the outside edges because the inside part's not going to be seen. And then I let that dry. So then I know I'm going to have an interesting mat for my card that blends perfectly. For the back part or for the mat part for my glimmering peonies, I have some Inca Gold cardstock from Tonic and it matches that Aura foil beautifully. It's a gold cardstock that has an iridescent shine to it. Could have used the solid hot foiled part that I did before but because these flowers are larger than the four and a quarter by five and a half and these are trimmed down even further I would have seen some of the white from the images on there and for this particular card I didn't want that so I just took that Inca gold foil and used that as a mat instead so I'm gluing my image piece onto the mat for my second card here and then I'm going to glue them onto the card base. I like to put an acrylic block over top of that to hold everything down flat, freeze up my hands to work on other things. And the one thing I don't think I actually mentioned, with that ink that got on that cardstock, I just used my sand eraser that I used for the overfoiling. So that's what I use to remove some of that ink. It kind of removes the top layer of paper and while sometimes it doesn't completely remove the ink, it typically lightens it considerably so that you can see the uh, cardstock underneath there and it's not quite as glaring. For my sentiments, I took some scrap cardstock and I used that die with it and cut out some excess pieces. And I'm using those to layer on top of there to um, give that sentiment a little bit of dimension. One thing to note with these die cuts is they're not exactly the same both ways. So if you happen to have it twisted and it doesn't quite match up, the nice thing about using a liquid glue is you can easily take that off and then fix it so you've got it the right way. The difference is not um, in your face. It's not really, really obvious. It's just a slight little bit on the bottom underside part of it, but it's always nice to have it done properly right off the bat. Once those layers are dried, I just put those onto the front of the cards and then put that acrylic block on there for a few minutes to let that dry. And here are the first two cards. I absolutely love how beautiful they look. These images are absolutely gorgeous. And now let's use them to create some five by seven cards. So for this one, I'm just using some gold foil, not using the Aura foil. So you can see how it's a little bit different. It just has that gold shine to it. It doesn't have that iridescent shine to it. And I cut my piece a little bit bigger than that glimmer plate. I have a half a sheet of hammer mill cardstock. I'm gonna put that whole half a sheet on there, put my plates on and then press the timer button. 
Once that goes off, I'll put it through my die cutting machine. By using a larger piece of cardstock here, once I have my image colored with the um, layering stencils, I can cut it down to the appropriate size for the card, but then I can choose exactly where to cut it down and I don't have to worry about that glimmer plate being perfectly positioned right from the get-go. So once again, I'm also using that solid hot foil plate to foil the excess part of that foil. I'm going to put that to the side. I'm not using it for this project, but it'll be used for a future project. So with that done, I can start ink blending using the layering stencils. So for this one, I've got a selection of yellows. I'm using squeezed lemonade and mustard seed. And then I took inspiration from the first one where I used um, some different colors um, inspired by the back of the package. So I'm adding some wild honey to it. So it's got a little bit of an orange tinge to it, but I really love how it ended up looking at the center of those flowers. So the squeeze lemonade, I'm doing the entire base of the flower. I'm starting at the beginning, or sorry, the center of the flower, and then working my way out as there's less ink on the ink blending brush. You could do a heavy coat over the entire thing and have it like all one color, but I always love the gradation of color when it goes from dark to light. For the mustard seed, I'm going to go about two thirds up on the petal so that about two thirds of the petal is going to have that color to it. And once again, I'll start in the bottom or the base of the petal, base of the bud, center of the flower, and then I will work my way out so that it goes darker in the center and lighter towards the outside. And just like before, I'm starting with my lightest color with the ink blending brush and then working my way darker. So I don't need to worry about cleaning off my brush, brush in between. I don't have to worry about um, contaminating my ink pads. So now I'm going in with the wild honey and I'm going to do just the center part of the flower and about a third of the way up in the petal. But you can see how just that little bit of a different color looks absolutely gorgeous on that flower. Now that that first stencil is done, I'm going to do the second part of those flowers with those same colors. I'm going to, I typically for the second one, we'll do a little bit heavier coat of the ink. So because these petals are the outside or behind the first ones, I want them to show up a little bit. I want, it's going to look like there's a little bit of a shadow there. So then I'm, that's why I'm a little bit heavier handed with those inks. They're all exactly the same color, but I don't really want them to kind of blend into each one. I want them to be shown a little bit more. So I'm a little bit heavier with that first color as well as the second and also the third. Still going in that same order. So I'm doing the lightest color first and then doing the um, second color, which is the mustard seed. And then I'll go in last with that wild honey for the centers of the flowers, the bases of the petals. Now I'm using all of these layering stencils with the glimmer plates that they coordinate with, but I think they would be really cool to use um, just on their own to color in some images without the foiled lines. And I'm gonna have to try them. I don't try that in this video, but I think it would look a lot like no line coloring. And it's another great way to create um, very simple cards and have another use for your layering stencils. Now. Typically, one of the ways that I like to add texture when I'm using layering stencils is I'll pick one layer and I'll use like glitter paste or I will spray that layer with some shimmer spray. I think it would be gorgeous to use, say, the first stencil of both of them, I think both of them, um, and use like a shimmer spray. I don't necessarily think that I would use the glitter paste with either one of these ones, but it's a great way to add some subtle texture a little bit of something different. I don't do that in this video. I've done it many times before when I've used layering stencils. So there are other uh, videos on my channel that have that in them, but it's just an idea of a different way to get a little bit of extra texture and add a little bit of something unique to your images when you're using some layering stencils. For the greens for this card, I'm using the same bundled stage and peeled paint. And a couple of times, or at least one time, I'll add in that tumbled glass, which is that blue, just to add that unexpected and different color tone, because I really, really liked how that looked in the previous cards. And as soon as we're done, this stencil, there's only one more to go. And you can see there's a lot of repetition with the ink blending with the different stencils. Um, it gets a little bit repetitive, but it really only takes a few minutes to color each 
layer and get a complete image. And I've mentioned before that I just rinse my stencils off with warm water, especially with the distressings, because they are just a dye-based ink, they come right off. But I do the same thing with those Cloud9 interference inks. Even though they are a hybrid ink and they have some mica in them, they just wash off with water. They're super easy to clean off, so you don't need to worry about it at all. There's sometimes a slight bit of staining on stencils or whatever with them, but I never mind that. When it's stained, but it's been used, I always love it. Now I'm using a little bit of the mustard seed on the edges of the sentiment. It just makes it a little bit less stark white for the center of the card. And then I took that wild honey and again, just a touch, just to pull in those colors that are on the card, but I still want the white in the center of that um, label to make sure that it is visible. So now that that image is done, I can start cutting it down. Now you can do your layers any way you want. A lot of these cards I have just an eighth of an inch difference between the different layers so that I have really, really thin mats. I kind of go in um, waves. Sometimes I really like having quarter inch difference and having thicker mats. And sometimes I just really like having thinner mats. It's a personal preference thing. Neither one is right or wrong. Um, sometimes that thinner mat just kind of ties in. And especially in this case, when we're using like a glimmered image that has a thin foiled line, sometimes just a thinner mat kind of complements that a little bit better. So the nice thing about doing this foiled image on a half sheet of hammer mill is when I'm layering them or when I'm trimming them down in order to um, create my mats, I can really pick and choose exactly which part I want to be in the center of my card. Here I'm using my favorite cheat or trick to get a faux looking mat. I had my yellow piece cut in order to create a yellow mat around it, but it kind of needed a little bit of green. That first green was a little bit too light, so I went and grabbed a little bit darker olivey green. This is just a Copic marker and I'm using the chisel end and running it along the side of the cardstock and it creates a very, very simple frame for that focal image. I could take some cardstock and create a nice thin mat, but then I would have had to trim down that piece a little bit more and I liked the size that it was at this point. So that's an easy way to cut down on layers on your cards as well as frame something out. If you're doing lots of cards that you like to mail and you're concerned with them getting too heavy, this is an excellent way to get the look of a mat without having that extra layer of cardstock. So now that this card is done, I have, I put the glue on the back, put the layers down and then have my acrylic block on top of there, holding that in place while I am adding layers to the back of my sentiment for the front of the card. Again, liquid glue makes this so simple and easy to do. And by being able to cut a bunch of those banners out with that one die, it um, made it really easy to have a bunch of these on hand ready to go and add to the back of the sentiments. Now that I've got those layers on there, I can put that on the front of the card. And you don't really need to add those extra layers on there. It's just a very simple way to add some extra dimension to a part of the card. Now I want to add just a touch of glisten or sparkle to the center of those flowers. So I have some glisten stickles here and I'm just adding some random dots in the centers of those flowers going to let that dry and it's just going to give a little bit of a different sparkle that's different from that foiled image. I absolutely love how this looks and even though yellow isn't my favorite color, you can't help but smile with those bright yellowy flowers there. For my fourth card, I wanted to add texture in a little bit of a different way and I wanted to try out something that had been in my head to use with a glimmer plate. So I have the glimmering peonies plate. I'm using some memento ink and I'm putting it on the base of my Spellbinders Platinum 6 machine. I have a half sheet of hammer mill cardstock and then I'm using my rubber embossing mat and I have the stacking here for embossing a die. And what I'm trying to do is emboss an impression with that glimmer plate. And when you look at the glimmer plate afterwards, all of that ink has transferred to the cardstock. Now, I will say it is slightly imperfect. There is a little tiny bit of ink where I didn't want it to be, but in the finished product, you don't actually notice that a whole lot. The one thing that I wanted really was to have the puffiness from embossing that plate, and that came 
that came right across. What I think I would do next time is use Versamark ink instead because it's a clear ink. And then once I've embossed it, I would use black embossing powder. So then I could use a brush to remove any embossing powder that was sticking to an area that I didn't want it to be. And then I would have that clear ink where I didn't want it to be, but you wouldn't really notice it as much as you would notice black ink. For coloring this image, I'm using those layering stencils again. I have some bundled stage and peeled paint that I'm using for the greenery. And then for the flowers, I'm doing that same technique as the second card where I'm using my black soot distress pad for the base of the petals and the um, bases of the buds. And then I'm going in with a Cloud9 Tropical Paradise ink pad. This one looks pink on the white cardstock, but on the black ink, it has a bit of a purple tone to it. And it looks absolutely stunning once this is done. Between the texture from the embossed plate and the um, iridescence from that ink pad, I absolutely love the way this looked. Now, the one thing to note is um, one of the ways when I... When I mentioned before, you got a little bit of the black ink where you didn't want it to when you embossed the plate. The, one of the other ways that I thought to fix it would be to tape that plate into place. However, that is not um, a good solution simply because when you go to emboss that cardstock, you would emboss the um, outline of that tape. So if anyone is listening to this thinking that that would be a good way to do it just know that you're going to have an embossed outline of your piece of tape even though that yellow tape is super super thin it still would emboss that outline and if that you're okay with that that is a good solution for you I knew that that was going to happen and I didn't want that so that's why I didn't do that for that particular step just wanted to mention that in case anyone is wanting to try that just so you know that that is likely what's going to happen. So for this next one, I'm going to do those same colors, the bundled sage, the peeled paint. And once again, I'm doing the darkest colors in the centers or the bases of the leaves, just to add some extra dimension. I'm going to do that black ink on the bases of the petals, and then do my Tropical Paradise Cloud 9 Interference ink. I for this one, I'm doing just plain distress inks for the leaves and then just that cloud nine for the flowers so that it has a completely different texture than the leaves, making it pop a little bit more. And I absolutely, this is one of my favorite of the cloud nine um, ink pads because I absolutely love pinks, purples, blues. And um, yeah, this one is my, this one's my jam. You can see me here using my left hand to hold that stencil down. Because all I have all of that embossed puffiness from embossing that glimmer plate, I want to make sure that that stencil is as low as possible so that I don't accidentally get my stencil brush um, underneath a part where I don't want it to go. Um, and by holding it down, that made that work perfectly. And you can see how I mentioned before, when I have a smaller piece of cardstock that I tape the paper down here, I don't have the tape or the paper taped down. I only tape the stencil to the paper because the paper is bigger than that stencil and it works perfectly like this. It helps keep that stencil in place. I don't have to worry about anything shifting at all. For the center of those flowers, I went heavy with that black ink on the center and then I'm going to use that interference ink and it's just going to show up with that purple iridescence to it. So it's got a nice dark base or a nice dark center to that flower. Now that that is done, I can do some more of the leaves. Like I said before, this is fairly repetitive with the stenciling, but I did want to include all of it so that you see all the layers coming together. In real life, it comes together really, really quite easily. It's only when you're trying to do commentary for it that it gets a little bit monotonous doing the same thing over and over again. So for this video, I intended to do only four cards, but there's actually five cards. And the fifth card is inspired by that second buttercup card where all of the, um, where everything looked green. Now I happen to be creating this video on St. Patrick's Day and it must have been St. Patrick's Day, um, it, it, the vibes, it just must have been meant to be. So I will be creating a four or fifth card with this and it's going to be St. Patrick's Day inspired. These plates are not released at this point so they can't be shown. So this is for ideas for next year and 
basically a way for me to remember that those buttercups also make really cool clovers. So to finish this fourth card off, I did the same trick that I like to do where I use some black cardstock. I cut it the size I wanted for the mat and then just use that ink pad to ink blend around it to create a perfectly coordinated mat. I use that same ink pad to color in my sentiment and that foil completely resists the ink so I don't have to worry about covering up that sentiment at all. Glue that in place, put my acrylic block on there to hold it down and then for this embossed part I want to make sure to be um, generous with the glue to make sure that all of that texture gets glued down as well make sure it has good contact with the base of the card and then I'm also going to put that um, acrylic block on there just to hold that down as well the sentiment can go onto the card once that is completely dry and I love how that sticks out from the rest of it. You could also take that black ink pad and ink blend around the edge of that stencil or around the edge of that sentiment in order to coordinate it a little bit better with the flowers, but I love how bright it is on that base. So here is the fifth bonus card. I happen to have green foil from the Christmas foil set. I'm using a piece of hammer mill cardstock that's four and a quarter by five and a half, and I'm foiling those buttercups in green foil. Now you could also do this with gold foil as well. I don't think it would change anything, but because we're doing St. Patrick's Day here, I figured why not go all out? So once again, I'm going to use the solid hot foil plate to foil the solid part. And this time I am going to use that foil. I'm gonna use it for a mat. And you will see some white areas on it where some of that image is, but that's okay. This is a bonus card. I'm cool with that. So once we have that all done, put it through my die cutting machine for the pressure and then peel off that St. Patrick's Day goodness foil. So now I'm going to use those stencils for coloring in. And you may notice I am starting with the fifth stencil and I'm working my way to the first because I wanted the um, clover to be the last thing that I did. Now I will say in the end, the greenery is a little bit darker than what I had envisioned in my head. So I would suggest if you're going to use this idea and create with it, be a little bit light handed with the greens for the leaves and the greenery, just so that those clovers can show up a little bit more and be a little bit more prominent. Um, in the end, I, I still love it. And when you tilt it in the light, I have interference inks on just the clovers. And I really love the way they look, but I would recommend being a little bit lighter hand with these greens just to make those um, clovers just a little bit darker, a little bit more prominent. The other thing that I had intended to do with the third card with the bright yellow buttercups one is I had intended to choose one of the stencils and emboss that stencil with the glimmered image just to give it a little bit of extra texture. I ended up putting my card together completely forgetting that I had intended to do that. So I will do that for this and you'll see that it gives it just a little bit of extra texture to it. Now, when I'm using the interference inks and I'm using that same summer garden one for this, um, what I typically like to do is use black ink with it for that interference. For this one, because it's all St. Patrick's Day themed, I chose to use green. So I'm using Rustic Wilderness, which is a nice dark green. I kind of thought you would still see the interference blue with it, but I would like it better with a green base rather than a black base. And I absolutely love how it turned out. You still get that interference over that dark ink, but you get a lot more of the green colors, which is absolutely perfect for this particular theme and the green foil that's on here. So I'm using that same ink blending brush for this uh, Summer Garden Interference ink pad. Um, because these areas are nice and small, even though I'm using a detailed ink blending brush, it really doesn't take much longer to do this ink blending. There's no, pa no point in getting a new brush to have a larger one for this. It would be slightly quicker with a bigger brush, but really not that, um, not that much. And you can see that it's really not taking that long. 
This would be a great one to do a five by seven card as well. I just wanted to get this idea out of my head and a four and a quarter by five and a half inch one was perfect for this. As well as the fact that because I knew this video was gonna come out and this particular idea wasn't really gonna be in season, um, I kind of thought a small card was perfect for this. Hopefully I remember it and do another video next year when it's in season. And if not, it's here. So I'm doing the same thing with this first stencil going in with that Rustic Wilderness Distress ink. And just like the black, I do take my dry cloth and I rub off the excess. Again, just trying to get as little um, ink contamination between that Distress ink and between my Cloud9 interference pad. I don't want to um, get any of that ink on there and change the color to it. I want it to stay as close to the intended color as possible. Here's where you really notice that the just, um, detail ink blending brush takes a little bit longer, but once again, not that much longer that it really makes a huge difference. If you were doing a lot of these cards, I would think that a larger brush would be very helpful, but for the odd card or two, it's really not that necessary. So once I have this done, I'm going to go clean off my stencils and then I will take that last stencil that I use, which is the centers of those petals, and I am going to tape my stencil to my paper. Now, remember before when I was talking about the glimmer plate, how you didn't want the um, paper taped to that stencil? or sorry, taped to that plate because you'd see where that was embossed. Here that doesn't apply because the only thing I'm embossing is the centers of those flowers. When I go put this in my die cutting machine with the embossing stacking, the paper is going to get pressed in the opening parts of that stencil because my paper is smaller than that stencil. So I don't need to worry about getting an impression from that tape. It's not going to happen here. So you're only going to get as much impression as the thickness of that stencil. The only way to make it thicker is to have multiple stencil sets and to use that in order to get a thicker impression. But for this, I think it works perfectly. It just pops that part out just a little bit more. Another idea would be to use the glimmer paste or the glitter paste that I mentioned earlier and have really glittery clover petals. That would work as well. Um, but I absolutely love the just, uh, just a touch of subtle extra dimension that you get from this. Now, I didn't have any sentiments in all of what I have that said anything about St. Patrick's Day or good luck or whatever. So the sentiment I used is from the Curved Everyday Sentiments, and it says best day ever. That was the closest thing that I could get for it. And I think it works perfectly with a four-leaf clover card. But you can see how with this finished card that if the greens for the greenery for the stems and leaves in the background was a little bit lighter I think those clover would pop a little bit more again I absolutely love the way the card turned out so it's not um, something that makes or break the card I think but I do think that next time I do this I would be lighter handed with it so that that was just kind of a subtle background to it I have some platinum stickers, stickles here, and I'm just gonna put a dot of stickles in the centers of those clover leaves. Because the sentiment that I used was one of the ones that I created at the beginning of the video that was foiled with the gold aura foil, I just wanted to tie that gold in a little bit so it didn't look out of place. I liked it as it is without that, but I thought by adding just a touch of gold stickles in the center of those clovers, it would tie that in. And here is the finished card. I absolutely love how when you tilt it in the light, it has an iridescent look to it and it really makes those clovers pop. Here is the one with the embossed glimmer plate. This one's the glimmering peonies. And I love the extra puffiness that you get from embossing that glimmer plate. And I'm really gonna have to try it with some other plates as well, because I love the look of it. Here is the buttercup card, nice and bright and cheerful for, especially for a sunny day. And here is the buttercups that inspired the clover card. Now, obviously, they're not yellow buttercups anymore, but I really love the color that they ended up being. I think it makes it a lot more interesting and a different way to use those stencils. Here's the first glimmering peonies card, and I absolutely love the touch of the wilted violet at the bottom there. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. I really appreciate you being here. Have a fantastic day.